Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So we got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. In charge of an entire treasury, he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He was asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he, would, and he invited Philip to get up and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led into slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before it's sheared, so he does not open his mouth. In this humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? Or his life is taken away from earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about who may I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and started with the scripture. He proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized, he commanded. The chariot to stop and both of them. Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him, and they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the religion. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 22, verses 24 through 30. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the Families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. 
He rules over the nations to him alone. All who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall serve him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known lords forever. They shall come make known he brought your unborn. The shaving beats it. He is done. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we may live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world god abides in those who confess that jesus is the son of god and they abide in god so we have known and believe the love that god has for us god is love and those who abide in love abide in god and god abides in them Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. 
because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. And at this time, I would like to invite all of the youth in the church to come forward. Come on up. I know you might be a little shy right now. Come on, come on. If you want to take a seat in one of these benches up here, you too, Bailey. Claire, do you want to come up here too? <laughs> you guys are doing a great job. So I have a question for you guys. Do any of you know? What this is. It's okay if you don't. Do, you, do any of you want to guess what it might be? Looks like a stick, right? Looks like a tree. Any other thoughts? Are you guys feeling shy because you're in front of everybody? <laughs> no? Okay. So this is a vine. And you probably don't see them very often, but that's how we get these, right? Do any of you guys want a grape, by the way? <laughs> Go for it. Help yourselves. Want a grape, too? Grape? Oh. If anybody else wants them, you're welcome to. <laughs> but yeah, so what you do is you take this plant, and you put it in the ground, and you wait a long time, and over time you water it, you feed it, and then this little branch right here just keeps growing up and up and up. It keeps expanding. And then little bunches of grapes start growing off of it. And that's how we get our grape juice, grape jelly, the wine that we use on Sundays, just kind of cool and very tasty, right? So in our reading today, the one that we just heard, Jesus said that he's kind, that he's kind of like a vine and that we're kind of like a branch. What do you suppose he's talking about? It's kind of a weird thing to say, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus is the one that keeps us growing. You know, we don't make grapes, but we produce other things throughout the course of our lives, right? Jesus tells us to be fruitful. And he's not talking about actual fruit like bananas or mangoes or something. But he's telling us that he teaches us how to grow and how to become better people throughout the course of our lives. What are some things that we can do to become better people? What are some ways that you can be a good person? Yeah. Cleaning up trash from your local park, absolutely. What are some other ways? What's that? Help people when they're hurt, yeah. What about being nice to your sibling? No. <laughs> Maybe sometimes, yeah. What are some other things that you can do to be a nice person? To, or what are some ways that you can learn how to be a nice person? And it's okay if you don't know. Do you want to take a guess? No? Can anybody else think of ways that you learn how to become a good person throughout the course of our lives? Look at others. What's that? Yeah, watch other emulate. people. What's up? Emulate. Yeah, so you find role models, people who you look up to, who teach you how to be good. Yeah, you do things in your community like picking up trash. You say kind things about and to other people. But it's one of those things that we have to learn. It can be kind of hard just to know sometimes what the right thing to do is and what, it's, what the wrong thing is. Sometimes it seems very clear and sometimes it seems a little confusing, right? Because we can live in a confusing world. So one of those ways that we learn how to be a good person and what the right thing to do is, so we come to church, right, and we learn here how to be a good person. 
we pray, and we also read about how to be a good person in the Bible. And so, to thank you guys for your help today, we have little presents for you all. So don't open them quite yet. I think the paper would just kind of go everywhere. <laughs> but these are for you especially. Where is, where is, there you are. So these are your own personal Bibles to take home and to read. And these will help you learn how to be a good person. And then we come back here and then we practice it together. Does that sound good? All right, well, thank you guys for your help. Can we get them a round of applause? <laughs> and you can go back to your seat for now. <laughs> Together, let's stand and proclaim the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are like the trees that grow beside the stream. The sunshine and the water feed us and strengthen us. Oh God, fill our hearts with love. Like the fruit on the tree, the fruit of the spirit must grow within us. Oh God, fill our hearts with love. For our church, our nation, and the welfare of the world. Oh God, fill our hearts with love that kindness and goodness will create a world where no one goes hungry. O oh God, fill our hearts with love, that we may practice our faith so that it may grow. O oh God, fill our hearts with love, that we may give love completely, totally, and without condition. O oh God, fill our hearts with love that we will search for peace in our own minds and in the world. O oh God, fill our hearts with love. O oh Lord, your word is a lamp for our feet, in darkness and in light and in trouble and in joy. Help us, Heavenly Creator, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. 
Good morning. First, a big thank you to all the kids that are helping us with our service. You guys did a wonderful job reading out loud. Yes. And you're doing a great job at Acolyte, so thank you. And we're looking forward to having them participate more as time goes on, so, so prepare yourselves. <laughs> um, just a reminder that after service today, the garden team is getting together to talk about the garden plots. Um, so after service, please see Al. You guys are leading it, yeah? Please see Alan Gale um, for the garden team meeting. So find them over here. And speaking of gardens and things that grow and green things, next week we are celebrating our gardens and all things that grow with our Rogation Day service. So Rogation Day is an ancient tradition out of England where we go around the fields, which is going to be our garden plots, and we give thanks to God for the gift of creation. We bless the soil. We scatter this blessed soil on the, on the garden plots. And then we give blessed soil to everybody to take home to their own gardens. We're taking the blessing back home with us. So next week is Rogation Day. That'll be after the 10 o'clock service. I want to say a big, big, very big thank you to everybody who helped um, with the cleanup downstairs and who helped clear out some of the old, some of the rooms that we had down there and took all that time to paint. If you haven't seen the downstairs recently, I highly encourage you to go downstairs and check it out. They did a phenomenal job. So big thank you to Craig, to Sharon, to Jan, um, and to everybody else who helped to make that happen. And the guys, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, just a reminder that the strawberry tickets are out there in the narthex. Please be sure to take them with you. Um, and I believe those were the only announcements that I had for this morning. But if I could ask the kids to come back up to the altar, they're going to help me to bless our gifts of bread and wine this morning. So if you guys can come back up, we talked about, come on, come on, it's okay. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
help us pray. So what you're going to do, we talked about this last week, when I move my hands around, you're going to kind of mimic what you see me doing. And what we're doing is we're gathering everybody's prayers and we're offering up to God together. Sound good? Okay, so let's put our hands out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. But chiefly are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us, and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you call us into covenant with you, who delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh, in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us, who revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. The night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. So hold that up. All right, careful not to drop so everybody can see. Behold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And now you guys can go back to your chairs.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.